All right, so in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to build this. And I'm just going to hit play. And as you can see here, I'm controlling an object and I'm controlling it by control by running around a joint, but it's actually giving me an input uh, or I'm, I'm using the cloth solver to make it a mix between the skinning and that cloth solver. And I'll show you how to do this. So I think we should just start over. And the way that we're going to do this is I can talk about theory just for a second. You have a skinned mesh. It's obviously moving around. You can either do it on a cache. So that means that if you want to add like muscle jiggle, you don't want to do like a whole muscle system. You just want to add a little bit of jiggle. Uh, and you can just basically paint in the cloth, you know, the simulation of the cloth, wherever you want that jiggle to be on. So that could be like a stomach or, a, you know, like a throat on a dragon or whatever, you know, like a, like a, um, a heavyweight character, muscles, whatever. You can use this trick. You can also connect these two to joints uh, directly so you can use them underneath a, s a skin. But in this case, I've cut it down to the bare minimum and I'll show you how to do this. And trust me, this is a really good thing to know. It's a little bit, of, I wouldn't call it super advanced, but it, you know, you have to follow along. Um, quite intense, but we'll get it. So I'll delete all this and then I'll start over and I'll try and run you through how we make this setup. I think I'm just going to delete everything just to be fair. Um, and even that one. So I got my empty Maya scene here and I'm just going to go make a plane because, you know, in the beginning, I just want to make sure that I have a, a plane uh, where the um, where the mesh can actually solve on. And I'm just going to delete. I always delete history on everything. Uh, if it's not a rigged thing, of course, I don't delete history. But, you know, if I want to start clean, you know, starting out by deleting and uh, searing out history and all that, uh, searing out and freezing my transformations, it's always a good place to start. So the next thing I'll do now is I'll just create a cylinder, or sorry, a sphere, and I'm going to move it up here. And I'm going to delete, as I said before, I don't I don't like to have history on stuff that I'm about to do any kind of deformation on. So I have the first here. I'm going to call this cloth, just to separate them out. And I'm going to have the second one called it skin. So this could be my you know skin character, you know, like my actual rig. And <coughs> with this, uh, if you haven't got it, then make sure you show shapes. So if you don't know the difference between shapes and uh, transforms, then I don't think that this might be a little bit tough, but every transform or every object in Maya basically that you create that has a, that looks like something in the viewport uh, will have, you know, a shape and a transform. And as you can see in the outline, if I don't show shapes, you won't see this little plus sign out here, which means that it's just going to show me as this is a regular transform. So I'm going to say show shapes. And then I can unlock that and you can see that really the shape or the object is actually consists of two things, the actual shape of the thing and the positioning of the object uh, in that in that world. So it, it's not the position of the individual uh, pieces, but it's the position of the object itself. And that has a shape that is, you know, made out of these uh, yeah, polygons. Great. So the first thing I'll do now or the next thing I'll do <coughs> is uh, take this cloth and i am going to go in and i'll say um, here we go end cloth and i'm just going to open up that menu because we're going to use it a few times and i'm going to say uh, create end cloth and if you don't know uh, what settings to use then you can just use mine so screenshot that and now we basically have that first piece of cloth running already very simple so <coughs> Uh, one thing that's really important when you're working with this is uh, that the size of your scene is the same size as mine. And you can kind of go up here and you can right click and say uh, grid options. I mean, my 2018, so I'm a bit of an old version here, but I have not updated for ages. Uh, but I set my length and width to 10 and then I set the subdivision to 10. So that kind of gives you the same size. Uh, you can probably also go into the settings and find out, you know, where you... um. Uh, where you set it up to um, the size of the the size of the scene. Uh, I can't remember that, but it uh, should be in centimeters. So if I go in here now, and you can say I I I press play here, um, then uh, the cloth is running, and that's great. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go into the attribute settings here under the um, nucleus, and I'm gonna set that one to point one. That means that I'm scaling it down. It goes a little bit faster, and then I'm gonna take this mesh here. Oh, sorry, the ground plane. And I'm just, oh, I don't need to do that. I can just go in here and I'm going to create passive collider. And now if I press play, 
and stopping that ball from you know just running endlessly so and if that doesn't work make sure under the passive collider that you do select the nucleus here so you're not creating a new one because it's kind of working around that which is the same one they're using for the cloth cool so now I have a couple of objects here and we're not going to do much cleanup. We're just going to continue talking. One thing that's important to understand about cloth is that if we know shapes, we also know that there are two kinds of outputs, for, uh, two shapes for a cloth. If I close it, or if I open it, you can see it's called output cloth, output cloth. If I now close it, or if I do like this, but if I close it and I click on this thing here, display input mesh, you will see that it's no longer called output cloth, it's now called cloth shape. So there are actually two shapes that are representing the same model. And what we're really seeing when we're seeing something play, you know, if I play it now, nothing's happening. And that's because I'm, play I'm displaying the input mesh, not the current mesh, which is technically the output mesh. They've made that nice and confusing, but you know how this. So if I go like that, now I'm showing, even I have to open and close it all the time. But when I open it again, as I said, I clicked on the display mesh, uh, display current mesh. I went back to the output mesh. So what I want to do now is I want to say input mesh. And I'm just going to open and close that. And now I have the cloth shape. Then I have the skinning. Uh, and also that's something that we need to do. So if I just select the skin mesh here, and I'm just going to isolate that by hitting control one. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select a, actually I don't need to do that. I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to say skeleton, create joint. So like that. I'm not gonna go through like every single hotkey I'm using. I assume that you will know some. Uh, I'll try and I'll, I'll go gentle, but but we won't go too slow. Um, then I select that joint and I select uh, the skin mesh here. I'm just gonna say skin and I'm gonna say bind skin. It doesn't matter, I'll do like that. And now when I move that around, obviously that one joint is basically controlling that object. So this object now, we don't need to translate that anymore. We can't either because it's locked, uh, and we now are controlling the we're now controlling the vertices, you know, by skin weights more than we're controlling the actual transform, uh, because obviously that locks out. Else we're gonna get double translations. So, with that, and that's great. Uh, normally, what I'll re you know recommend doing is uh, that you uh, create uh, some kind of controller where you can control this, so you can always get back to that position. Uh, and I'll probably quickly do that just to make sure that we don't do anything crazy. So I'm going to say just make a nerf circle. I'm just going to call this CTRL. I don't think I had this in my old uh, in my old setup, but but I'll snap that up to here. And then I'll just select that and I'll just isolate this controller. So control one, control one, select that and just make that shape a lot bigger. And now when I move that around, the controller is set to zero because it has a group here that's holding that translation. So whatever I can select out here, zero it out, and I'll select the joint, and I'll just say constraint, parent constraint that. So now when I move that controller, uh, that's all good, and I can now hide the joint. Great, so now I have a rigged object, and I have a cloth object, and now we need the two to actually talk together. So the next thing I'll do now is I'll take the skin shape, and I'll take this cloth shape. Remember, it has to be the cloth shape, so that's the input mesh. Make sure it says cloth shape, that's important, because if it doesn't, you're working on the output mesh and that's not gonna go well for you. So now uh, what I'll do is I will uh, select these two shapes and I'll go up to the Windows General Editors and then go down to Connection Editor. And in here, I'm gonna go down all the way. I'm gonna find the one that's called Out Mesh. Should be somewhere, I think it's in the, da, 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 da. I just wanna make sure I'm on the skin mesh. I am, and we're looking for Out Mesh. There we go. And then we take the in mesh here. And you see nothing happens, which is actually not a bad thing. So what I'll do now, I don't I no longer need the skinned mesh. I skinned it the way I wanted it. What I really want to see is uh, is how the out mesh is behaving. So first of all, <coughs> if I go here and I just say show out mesh, current mesh, and I press play, you'll see it fall. And that's okay, because on the skin cluster. You remember, I'm going to keep this open because when I'm going to show you one thing in just a second here. If I go in here under the attribute editor of that cloth mesh, we have all the settings for the cluster. If you see on the in cloth shape, you can see that there is um, a lot of settings. And one thing, you know, we put it into the input mesh, but if I look at the input, input mesh attract here, that's set to zero. So right now, this is actually not doing anything because the uh, uh, cloth solver is telling this to ignore the input. So I'll take this one and I'll dial it up to one. 
and uh, by that I'm also going to dive this down to uh, zero so I so it doesn't mess up with each other and then I'm going to hit play and now the object is no longer falling because it's actually 100% following um, my my skin mesh and I can prove that by just hitting play and I'm going to use this one so we are running it on there and you can see it's a bit slow because it's still trying to like actually solve it that's why you usually cache these things out and I'm just going to reset the time there so you can see that now the object that was before skinned and was falling and had a, had a life on its own is now um, following this skinned object because we set that input mesh there so now the next thing I'll do is I'll go in here I'll select that cloth there and I'll say display input mesh and this is very important if you go like that you have the cloth shape and again it's really confusing that it doesn't change that doesn't have a different color or anything like that so we could probably go in and color it but we don't want to do that so we have this cloth shape and we have connected one mesh to the other but that's not really what we want we want some of it to be cloth still so we can have you know that jiggle mesh that jiggle stomach that you know those big guns that are inflating when you when the character's flexing or whatever it is uh, and so on the input mesh here I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say paint and I'm gonna say paint vertex maps and input attract and you can see it's all white and that's basically because it's all told to follow this object 100% everywhere so if I go in and we know if we go into the tool settings here if you don't have that you can pick it up here you can see if I go in here and I say replace by zero I'm gonna set that to replace and by zero I'm gonna just paint out a few things here. I know I have my I, yeah, it's a bit annoying I have that plane in the bottom now because we're not going to use it anymore but I'm not going to be very precise here I'm just going to show you like what happens I'm going to keep as little as possible so we get actually I think I'm going to do something like that that's cool okay that's fine and then just, just smooth it out a little bit and see if we can actually get that to work I think eh, you know what I'm not too happy about my own work here but oh there we go all right and I just want to make sure that we actually see something but that we don't overdo it so I think this is fine there we are <coughs> okay so again we are so we're seeing the input mesh here and I'm gonna just say show output mesh or current mesh open close that make sure that it says that and now you can hit this and I'm by the way I'm using um, I'm using this uh, interactive playback that's what you have to do if you want to see the cloth and you want to move around in the viewport at the same time that's also why animators won't be able to see this every time they move a frame that's not how cloth works it works you know it calculates per frame velocity and so on so you can't just do you know like drag it and it will already know where it's supposed to be going because it's calculating every time but if I press play now you'll see that the mesh is actually now following the cloth in the bottom because I painted out the original skinning but it's following the original input mesh attract I painted that out in the bottom but I kept it in the top okay so what's really fun now i'm just gonna dub this up to let's say 300 and i'm gonna press this there and i'm gonna go like this and now tada you have this uh really nice uh, rigged uh kind of blob but hopefully you can see the potential in using this and i can guarantee you i've done a lot of uh, character with muscle simulations uh, around this trick uh, and it's very useful i think you obviously still need a lot of ram on your pc in order to make it work but uh, your Mac or whatever but but um, but it is it is a lot faster than the muscle system uh, if you just want to do something really quick and easy uh, and once you've made the setup it's not that hard to actually script it up either and I recommend you uh, you kind of take those uh, take the time to just do that um, so yeah uh, one last time what we're doing and you know it also works like if I go in and I set keys now so I can go in and do I can go in and let's do something a little bit weird and you can see how it's trying to actually you know calculate <laughs> so you can see how it actually works with the animation and you know like you can also go in and with the cloth system this is not a cloth class by all means but you can always to go in and take a different presets because now you have the setup and if you say select that cloth here and just take a preset pre preset and I'm just gonna, I, I usually go like something like t-shirt or whatever. Oh, wow, that's a bit, that's a bit loose. That's a bit, uh, a little too hard, right? Oh yeah, so one thing that's really important when you do that, and I'm happy I just made that mess, uh, is that when you choose a preset 
uh, obviously like it's gonna take the input measure track and set that back to zero so make sure that that you actually just always go back and do that so um so you know that that's working um i'm a bit surprised that i don't see this working now so i just want to make sure that i'm not filling you with lies so i'm just gonna go here Oh, that was so fun, right? He could have just like closed down the lecture and then uh, said like, oh, that's fine. That's exactly how I wanted it to be. But no, let's just try and make it right. So let's see, are we actually seeing any kind of inputs? We're on the cluster shape and we just want to make sure the current shape. There we go. So yeah, just make sure that you're showing that output class. That was what was wrong. So you can see like now, obviously working very nice. And if I want to do like a little bit more of a interactive playback, I can probably not do that now that this object is keyed, but yeah. There you go. All right, guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, go to the web website and uh, check out if you uh, want to learn a little bit more about rigging. Um, I have a few courses uh, in all kinds of uh, kinds of uh, character rigging, and you can also do the free class on the Quadruped or an introduction class to Maya Python. Um, in any case, have a great day, and uh, I hope this was uh, this was informative. Take care, guys. See ya.